Hi, I'm Aria, or Miss Aria, and I'm going to do a couple of demonstrations of how I get students to twinkle. On my website, Generation 4 Strings, you see that? There you, go. you can find a PDF that you can follow along with, which is called Miss Aria's Progression to Twinkle. Okay, so I'm going to start on page two. And on page two, there's a section called Getting to Know Your Violin. And the first thing I do is I sing a major scale to the parts of the instrument. So I normally have the instrument lying on the ground and I'll sing the song. This is the scroll, these are the pegs, this is the fingerboard, these are the strings, this is the bridge, these are the F. Holes. This is the tailpiece. This is the jaw rest. Jaw rest. Tailpiece. F holes. Branch. Strings. Fingerboard. Pegs and scroll. It's great to sing things in a scale because it gets kids used to singing and um, it's helpful for their musical ear. So that's the first thing I do. I also talk about all the different parts of the instrument. Of course, you have the scroll, the pegs. I talk about the importance of letting an adult tune with the pegs. Uh, the peg box, the nut, which is the only place on the fingerboard where the strings touch the fingerboard without you pressing down. So that's the top of the fingerboard called the nut. This is the fingerboard, this long black thing. You have our strings, E, A, D, and G. You have the bridge, which I tell kids is kind of like your nose. You never go home and take a nap on your face, even if you're really, really tired. You just wouldn't do that. That's uncomfortable and you can't breathe. So you never set the instrument down on its face or on the nose. Um, we have the F holes. I also talk a little bit about the sound post, which is right underneath the foot of the bridge. It's a little tiny post about this big that helps the instrument resonate and create sound. I let them know that if you ever shake your violin and it makes a rattling sound that you need to take it to the violin doctor immediately because your sound post has fallen. We also talk about the tail piece and the chin rest. In the song I called it the jaw rest but um, that's because I want children to identify that their actual jaw, you can see my violin callus, their jaw goes on the instrument and not their chin. Because a lot of children, especially those who don't really have a teacher, they think because this is called the chin rest, they put their chin on the chin rest and that's not proper. So I get in the habit of calling this the jaw rest. Uh, then I talk about the button. Uh, in cellos, this is an end pen, but I also mention that to them, that the violin and the viola have a button and the saddle connects to the button. So that, those are the parts of the instrument that I talk about. And then I go over string names. I'm just referring to my PDF, so I'm going in order here. Um, now, I'm originally from Gainesville, Florida. Go Gators. And so I would say every alligator drinks Gatorade. Mainly that's for the parents to remember the strings because I, it's a big no-no to write on the bridge. I never ever encourage anyone to write on their instrument so they can remember. If you just remember this friendly little sentence, every alligator drinks Gatorade, you can remember the names of the strings. Now when I'm working with kids, I prefer to have them sing the strings and compare it to uh, voice types that they're familiar with. Like for instance, the G string, G, now that I'll talk like this, this is your G string. Sounds kind of like daddy's voice. This is the G string. G, daddy talks like this. And then we have D, this is the D string. The D string kind of sounds like mommy's voice. And we talk about the D string and I make them sing it and say it too. And then we have A, the A string. The A string sounds kind of like their voice. The student's voice, the child's voice, this is A, and then we have E, the E string. Not very many people talk like this, maybe Mickey Mouse, but that would be really weird if someone did. So we talk about E, E, it's too hard to talk in because that would be strange. And we have A, the A string, sounds kind of like the student A, and then we have D, the D string.
sounds like mommy's voice and G, daddy's voice, G. It really helps to have them sing it because if they can produce the sound with their voice, that's another way for them to remember the sounds of the instrument. I also love to have them close their eyes and put their hand on the back of my instrument and have them feel the difference of the strings. That resonates a lot more than say the, the E string. So um, having them feel and touch and get familiar with their instrument is really the first step to playing the violin and getting students comfortable doing it. So that is halfway through. Um, getting to know your bow. We have the bow, of course. We have the tip, the stick, the grip, frog. I don't know why they call it a frog because apparently it looks like one but not to me. But this is the frog. The end screw, the silver clip, or also called the ferrule, and the horsehair. So it's important that you encourage children not to touch the horsehair. Even if your hands are clean, the oils, oils on your fingers uh, will get the bow dirty. So encourage them to uh, learn how to tighten and loosen on their own and there's a big process of having to do that putting bow tips in a certain direction and loosening and tightening and making sure our hands are on the stick and not gripping the hair so that's up to the teacher to decide how to do it i prefer not to give them a certain number of turns um, but rather to see what the bow looks like when they tighten the bow should have, still have a nice natural curve to it, and it shouldn't be one big, thick uh, rectangle. And let's see here. I do a lot of bow hand and violin games, so um, hand games. So I, I'd say put your violin hand on your head, and put your bow hand on your nose, put your violin hand on your tummy, put your bow hand on your tummy. Wave hello with your violin hand, uh, that kind of thing. And refer to them often as your violin or playing hand and your bow hand. So proper feet position, uh, we have a zip and step basically. And I'm gonna have to show you my feet, unfortunately. So we have rest position feet, zip and step. So I also encourage them um, to talk about how big of a step they should be taking. We're not surfing or snowboarding. It really is just a zip and a baby step. And this is actually really hard for some children being able to zip their feet and just take a little step. And it's, it's the foundation for the posture, so it's important that you do discuss this with them. See if I can get my phone back right again. It's a little high. <laughs> All right, the last thing I'm going to do is the rest position song. This is the tune of Twinkle. I can get my phone. So, here we go. So, the children can have their instrument on the floor and their bow also on the floor. The teacher instructs them to get out their ice cream scoop and scoop up their violin by picking it up from the neck, okay? And get out their bow grabber, picking up the bow, just in a nice fist. You're gonna put your violin under your bow arm and point your bow down. So this is rest position. A lot of children do this. You have to make sure that they are modeling you and you might need to remind them which arm the instrument is going under. Sorry, my shoulder rest fell off here. So we have the rest position song. Rest position, feet in line. Scroll in front, that's mighty fine. Check your bridge, cause it should be peeking out at you and me. Now it's time to take a bow. Deep breath. Itchy knee and sun is how. 
And from the back, what they see with me modeling it, and it would go like this. So practice with me. Rest position, feet in line. Check their feet. Scroll in front, that's my define. Check their scrolls. Check your bridge, cause it should be peeking out at you and me. Now it's time to take a bow. I turn and face them. Take a deep breath. Itchy me and sun is how. And that's it for page two.